Good morning, everyone. We would like to welcome FedEx Cup leader John Rahm to the Media Center here at the FedEx St. Jude Championship. John, welcome. First time entering number one into the playoffs. Just want to get some general thoughts about how the regular season went so far for you. <laughs> well, it's been, uh, it's been a really good season. You know, uh, accomplished a lot of things I set myself out to do this year. And one of them was to, to be sitting right here as number one. So, um, you know, really proud of what I've done so far. I'm looking forward to, to going keep it going in the playoffs. Uh, I feel like I've played this golf course well in the past. I've played fairly well in the playoffs in the past, so hopefully I can uh, keep doing what I've been doing and, and give myself a good chance. Speaking to your accomplishments from the regular season, capped off um, as number one for the Comcast business top 10. Mm -hmm. um, was that a goal leading into the season? Yeah. Yes, it is. You know, I've been, I've been able to be in the top 10 before and never win it. So, you know, it shows to the wins and the consistency throughout the year to, to be able to get it done. So, yeah, it's, uh, and it's one of those things we can check off the list now. With that, we'll open up with questions. For those who have questions, go and raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you. We'll get one here in the middle to Brody. I thought I was done. Hey, John. Uh, I think a year ago you were kind of, you know, when the new format for the playoff was announced, you were still kind of figuring it out. Now that it's here, you saw the drama last week. How do you feel kind of about 70 being the number and that, and just kind of what this format's going to be like the next three weeks? Would you say I was, like, oh, trying to figure it out for this? A year oh. ago you said you were uneasy, I believe, with the new format. Well, you don't know the full facts, right? Um, Uh, well, I mean, we know the reasoning to, to reducing it now. I think going 125 to 100 to 70 or to 50 to 30 made more sense before. We just felt like, at least I personally felt like in one week going from, you know, disposing of 55 players is quite a big jump. So uh, I think has a little, this has a bit more logical sense to it. Um, and, you know, all those players at the end make it still have the fault to be able to earn a better position. In, in the FedEx Cup as well, so going for next year. So um, I like it, obviously. <laughs> being comfortably inside that number, obviously I'm going to like it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it's, it could be a much better format going into to future years. And a mic over here to Doug in the front. Even though you've, you've yet to play poorly, um, probably for many decades by now, but, but do you come into each year um, with, with any expectations uh, and, and knowing that you still have to start over and earn it? Or as, I don't mean to flatter you here, but as, as consistently well as you've played since you came out, do you just come to expect it now? Uh, do I expect it? Yes and no. Like I, I, I put in the work, so I would expect positive results from it. Uh, I know what I'm capable of. Uh, what those results are, you know, I can't tell you, right? I've, I've had a good career so far, and you know, I, only once I've been able to get multiple PG Tour wins. So uh, hopefully, I can. This is the second year I'm being able to do it. So hopefully, I can keep adding to that and, and be able to get two or more in many seasons to come. Uh, I like to add that to one of my levels of consistency throughout it, but just having been able to win every single year for the last six years is, you know, it's quite an accomplishment in my. And right next to Doug Mark. Uh, John, I think there's a players meeting with Jay tonight. What, um, what are you hoping to hear from him as this continues to move forward? <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> I really have no idea. Uh, I was told before, you know, we we got a text that this was probably going to happen. Uh, I'm probably going to go open-minded and and hearing the membership out, right? Um, that's kind of what I go. I want to. I would like to see where other people's heads are at. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any announcements from from the PJ Tour management side or not, but uh, you know, I'll just go. 
hoping you know I get to to hear what other players have to say and see how how different that is or same to to what I'm thinking. I really can't tell you much because I don't know. Right, it's just. Go, Nick. John, were you a part of the group that sent the letter to Monahan and asking for changes and more accountability? What letter? The letter that was reported last week that eventually ended up with Tiger Woods on the... Yeah, on the, uh, my name was on that, yeah. Why, were you, why did you decide to be a part of that letter? Because I believe we have a duty as some of the players and the more unified front we present, the better chance of getting what we want done will happen. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I believe it was a, a very good cause for the PGA Tour and for the players. Were you, what was your reaction to what came out of it? I was happy, you know. Um, it's pretty much what we, what we expect, we hope to come out of it. Go in the back here with Gary. Uh, John, could you just kind of talk about yesterday, obviously you had time at the hub to meet Olivia and Calvin and kind of participate in that. Um, just kind of what does it mean for you to be here with the patients and kind of that activation? How fun was that for you? I wish we could do more things like that throughout the year. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we're getting questions about golf politics and throughout the year we keep talking about live golf and all of this. and. To get perspective in uh, doing a really fun video activation with Jordan Spieth and Calvin and Olivia is, is very refreshing, right? Um, first thing Calvin said when I met him is like, first thing he said is, man, I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed, this and that. I don't like the heat, but I'm blessed. Uh, that, that's all he kept saying, right? Uh, he's an Oakland boy and he didn't really enjoy the humidity that, that there's here in Memphis, but he was very happy to be there and, and same with Olivia. We were one of the biggest hangers I've ever seen, and somehow it didn't seem like it was enough room for her, for her to run around and, and be herself. So it was, uh, it was extremely fun uh, for people that get to see it at the end. Jordan and I got into it as well. It was, it was pretty fun to see us run around and, and kind of feed off their energy, right? Uh, it just puts things into perspective, right? It's over what's important. Both of them are Purple Heart recipients. Uh, uh, I believe even within Olivia's family, her sister um, had some other health issues as well. So it's, uh, you know, it really shows you what's important in life uh, and how privileged I truly am to be in the situation I'm in, right? So uh, it was a lot of fun and I'm hope, I hope I'm get, I get asked to do something similar again in the future. We have Sean on the right. What are the biggest benefits physically and mentally from just having a few weeks off this summer and having a lighter schedule? Well... I usually try to get, get like a little bit more weeks off throughout the year, um, you know, kind of have a, a, even a little bit more distributed, but those three weeks off before the Open in my mind were needed, you know. Uh, I was able to play really well early on and, and we, you know, played a lot of tournaments and be in contention and, and that can take a toll. So uh, it was very needed to recharge and, and could feel the difference on the golf course at the Open. So. Um, especially before the playoffs as well, looking forward to it. You know, the three weeks can be, can be an art tough, and uh, I'm hoping to, to make it to the end, um, being as close as possible to, to winning it. Um, so, yeah, just having that extra energy is very nice. We'll bring the microphone back over to Doug. Until then, we'll go in the back. Two questions. Uh, first of all, back to golf politics for just a brief second. Um, the next year's system giving opportunity to fields through the top 10 in the FedEx mm -hmm. and the ones in between, et cetera. What, what do you think about the four exemptions? Is that too many or is it just enough? Exemption? How many, what exemptions? Which ones? Each, for the big events, for the signature events, each one gets four, um, four free spots, basically. I, listen, I, and I voiced this when it came up. I wasn't in favor of those tournaments having invites or exemptions, however you want to call it. You know, everybody that's playing there's earned it one way or another. So, to get exemption, you just don't want it to go to somebody who just, you know, for whatever reason they liked. As a person who got his PGA Tour card through 
PJ Tour exemptions, <laughs> you, you want them to, to go to the right person. So I'm hoping those events realize the position they're in and give it to people that truly, truly can do something out of it, right? Uh, there is a way for players not into those events to somehow qualify into those events. So I'm hoping they use some of those to maybe the people that were close and didn't quite make it. Uh, players that, you know, they've earned it throughout their play in the past. Um, you know, just hope they use them in a way that, you know, it can be meaningful for for somebody for the their the year or their or their career in golf. Do you, do you fear it could become a popularity contest? No, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but it's it's obviously common for a sponsor or a tournament to basically pull towards home turf, right? Um, I would be an advocate for amateurs or college players to get certain invites. Uh, I don't think those events would be the ones that where amateurs should be in, right? That's that's my that's an example of of what I mean. Yeah. Give it to players that have been playing hard all year and this year to earn that spot, and maybe they didn't get the chance, but we're quite close. That's that would be my view on it. And then as it relates to the, the golf we're playing right now, for the, for the year you've had, and you've come close to this FedEx Cup before, uh, is it odd at all that pretty much no matter what you do, it comes down to Eastlake? And is the goal, outside of winning the next couple of weeks, just to make sure you're not too far behind? Well, obviously you want to win every time we tee it up. But yeah, the goal is to, to try to get to Eastlake as number one and, and enjoy that, that two-shot lead. Uh, you know, it's always made a difference. It made a difference when I finished second place. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a reason why they give it to you. So if you can take advantage of it, it would be, it would be nice. Back over to Nick. John, considering everything that's happened over the past two months, do you think Jay Monahan should keep his job? I think I made my stance on that at the Open. Um, clear. Uh, I think he should have the opportunity right now to to finish this off the way he did. I think uh, we're quickly forgetting how well he managed a lot of things. Uh, he did an amazing job in COVID and kept a lot of people employed. We were the first major sport to come back. I know UFC was doing fights, but we were the major sport to come back. And, you know, a lot of players were able to earn their cards and keep competing thanks to that. So I think we shouldn't forget that that quickly. And again, we should give him the chance to see this through, right? Um, and then after everything's said and done, if players want to make a change, then that should, would be a better time. But right now, I don't think it is. If you had the chance, sorry, can I? If you had the chance to ask one question or make one change, what would that be? <laughs> That's too vague of a question because we really have no idea what's coming. Like, we're not on those meetings. They have until, what is it, January to, to be in those negotiations. Uh, I can tell you right now, my priorities are a lot lower than <laughs> what a lot of people would think. If I have to, if I go by request, I know this is going to sound very stupid, <laughs> but as simple as having a freaking porta potty on every hole. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but I can't choose when I have to go to the bathroom, right? You know, I've told the tour this many times, uh, as simple as that. Um, just simple little things better for the tour, right? Just making sure, even though they do a phenomenal job with food throughout the year, just making it more consistent, right? This TPC events, because the PJ Tour is more involved, our food situation is unbelievable. Right, they, we, they have nutritionists that they've hired to work with and, and the, the options and the sources are, are incredible. So I would like to see that more across the board on every single tour event. I would like to see physio areas to be a little bit better. Uh, even though the gym trailer is great, it's still a trailer. So when you have three people in it, you're already a little crowded. So seeing uh, a better workout facilities as well. Uh, and those are the kind of things that I hope come out throughout this whole thing, right? I've mentioned many times we're making the tour better for the players, and I mean that, right? The very basic things they can do in tournaments to make them all as good as they can be is where I would like to see some changes. Uh, everything else can come out afterwards, but I'm not so worried about purses and bonuses and all those things. I think this uh, giving us the best amenities possible is one of those things that that should be a concern. That's at least a lot of things that I keep going to with them. So it's not usually what puts in people's minds. 
We'll bring the microphone up here to Luke in the front. Hi, John. Um, your proximity stats are just super good <laughs> this season, especially with like outside 150 yards and proximity to the fairway. And I'm just wondering, what do you, attri what, what do you attribute that to? Is, there, is that something you think about a lot? And how do you go about working? You on? said oh, outside of 150 yards? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I attribute it to anything specially. Uh, when I, I mentioned when I made a change to, to Callaway, it was because I saw a room of improvement for me as a player with the golf ball. It was a little bit more dynamic for me. And, and I think this is one of the things I attributed to, right? Um, it gives me a little bit more play with the, with the iron shots and a little bit better control for the way I like to hit the golf ball to hit uh, certain shots. And I think that's why you see in the stats reflected the way it is. And, and how often are you hitting those different shots, I guess? From oh, very often, from very often. I mean, you know, I, I see obviously various ball flights when, I, when I, I'm, I'm attacking a pin, and I've been really confident enough this year to, to try to execute every shot I see. But, um, you know, it's a ball that is stable on the wind, and that's why it's, it's been allow, allowing me to do certain things and move it right to left, left to right, high, low. That's, you know, I'm just comfortable, and oh, pretty much the ball's gonna come out on every window I, I want it to, and, you know, with the, with the curve that I need. That's not that I couldn't do it before, but it's just giving me that extra confidence. Unless we have any others, we'll finish up with Doug in the front. No, no. I wanted to look ahead just briefly to the to the Ryder Cup as it relates to what your what your schedule is going to look like post East Lake. Uh, well, it's not like we have a lot of time after East Lake, right? So uh, I will go play the BMW in Wentworth. Um, it's a great event. I've I've had two really good finishes there with a great Sunday round last year. So. Um, Looking forward to going back, supporting the, the DP World Tour and, and enjoying that week. And, you know, obviously being with the already selected team that, well, the team will be selected by then. So being with the team, the Ryder Cup team itself, um, it's going to be nice. So looking forward to that one. That'll be, that'll be the only start I have before, before the Ryder Cup. Yeah, I don't even, I mean, I'm not playing the week after East Lake <laughs> or the week after that. So. <laughs> who, do you, who do you think has the, the tougher job with picks, Luke or Zach? I think they both have a tough job. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't know what to tell you because they've both given themselves so many picks that uh, I have a hard time differentiating both of them. I think it's hard for both of them. I think they're probably going to get, you know, the first four pretty quickly, and then those last two are going to be tough. Uh, I think they're both equally difficult. And final ones, Mitchell in the back before we wrap it up. John, one last thing from us. Do you have any snacks or food in your bag you eat throughout the round, or what do you traditionally do with that? Oh, what, sorry? Do you have any snacks or food you put in your bag throughout the round on the course? Snacks? Mm hmm <laughs> What do you traditionally what, do with Do that? I look like I don't eat food? Uh, yes. Uh, it's, it's, come, it's, it's become a little bit more apparent that people are catching on the sandwiches that I have on the golf course. So yeah, I do have, uh, I do have some sandwiches that I eat throughout the course. Um, nothing special. Kelly is in charge of them. She is the, thank God I have her, because otherwise I'll forget to make them every single time. Um, but yeah, she makes them. It's, it's three of them, and obviously um, six halves, and eat them every three holes, more or less. That's, that's what I do. All righty. Thank you, John, for taking the time. Wish you. you the best of luck this week.